heavy. Bored. But this is uh, Richard Sykin. This is his first book. And the uh, interesting thing about this first book is the fact that it won the Yale series of Younger Poets. If you don't know what that is, that is one of the most prestigious first book awards you can ever get, if not the most prestigious. And that's only available to writers that haven't published a full book yet and under the age of 40. And uh, <clears throat> this won that prize in 2004 and then was officially published by Yale University Press in 2005. And that date's going to be very important as Cassandra and I get into this here. Uh, so keep that in mind, listeners. But that's for the book nerds out there, Yale University Press. And you can find this on Amazon. It's a poetry book. It's not very expensive. So get yourself a copy. But yeah, so basically... We both disagree. This is an <laughs> absolutely life-changing book. You should buy it. And what I was chatting with Cassandra about a little bit was that in 2005, this was published. And I started bringing up like how kind of the relation to emo culture and kind of the peak of emo at that time. And those millennials that know what we're talking about, probably only millennials know what we're talking about in terms of like, I guess there's some Zoomers that like, view it as like a novelty or like a nostalgia factor, but like we fucking lived it, right? Like this was everything. And it's fitting that I think Sykin had this book come out in 2005 and this, how important that is to the emo culture aspect that it was like, this is peak time for emo. Yeah, no, he literally, I mean, like has that line in there in Wishbone, I'm bleeding, I'm not just making conversation. Like what could be more emo than that? <laughs> cut, cut my wrists and black my eyes. <laughs> we should do that anytime there's a song mentioned we should uh add that to a list or something cassandra came up with the idea of putting out a, like a companion emo playlist to this oh yeah I, i've already written down multiple songs yeah. that like as i was reading the collection again i was like this song and this song and this song <laughs> so there will there will be emo talk about this listeners and it's not irrelevant and it's not us i don't think it's us forcing it into that framework either i think it's actually really important to this book and its impact not just on poetry but like on people like us that like pick it up and read it i think it's just you can't talk about this book without bringing up the fact that emo was the hottest shit in the world at that time like it was the fucking music it was the fashion it was even like like all the top 40 bands at that time all the top 40 artists they were fucking emo like, even Green Day put out their fucking emo album, like, 2004, right? Like, <laughs> And I also think that there's, like, a ton of artists downstream from this book, whether, again, like I said before, whether they read it or not. And I think a lot of them did read it, to be honest. Like, a lot of the artists that I'm thinking of, and we'll get to this later, are also writers. They're also poets. Like, they probably did read this book. And as I was rereading it, I was like, oh, wow, like not only did like the emo, you know, moment or whatever predate or coexist with this book, but then I also think that there are lyrics that come later, like in the decade after this book that were inspired by it, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, the lingering, the like the lingering effects of emo. And then you think, I think you're thinking of those like bands that came out like 2012-ish, right? Like when we were in college type. Yeah, I'm thinking. Inner. Resources. shows such a lack Heavy. of gratitude for life. Bored. I, I aspire to boredom, Heavy. I should say. Bored. Heavy. I am heavy, heavy, heavy. Bored. Has your night sweats and the day sweats, pal? Pal, I do. 